Our war is against Hamas terrorists, not against Palestinian civilians. We will continue to facilitate humanitarian assistance and to do our utmost to keep civilians out of harm's way, even as Hamas uses civilians as human shields. In 2009, Benjamin Netanyahu returned as Israel's prime minister, facing a new challenge. Hamas was in control of Gaza. But why did Netanyahu, who pledged to dismantle Hamas, adopt a strategy of uneasy coexistence? How did this impact the volatile Israeli-Palestinian conflict? Let's explore the political strategies which made Netanyahu rely on Hamas to consolidate his political power and hindered peace negotiations, ultimately fueling the current conflict. Historical Context In 2009, the Israeli-Palestinian conflict entered a new era when Benjamin Netanyahu was re-elected as Israel's Prime Minister. This period was marked by the rise of Hamas, a group known for its stance against Israel's existence. Hamas's ascent to power in Gaza after winning the 2006 Palestinian elections marked a significant shift in the region's dynamics. The situation intensified in 2007 when Hamas seized complete control of the Gaza Strip. Netanyahu's approach to this challenge was sometimes contradictory. Despite public vows to dismantle Hamas, his government opted for strategies that resulted in getting in bed with Hamas. The Strategic Paradox In 2007, a critical meeting between the head of Israeli military intelligence and the U.S. ambassador in Tel Aviv laid the groundwork for a strategic paradox. The leaked cable from this meeting seemed to welcome Hamas's control over Gaza, a move that, on the surface, appeared counterintuitive. It allowed Israel to treat Gaza as a hostile entity, simplifying its military and diplomatic strategies. This approach is deeply rooted in the history of the region. When Hamas took complete control of Gaza, it was a strategic opening for Israel. Gaza, only an hour away from Tel Aviv, became a separate entity that Israel could isolate. The implementation of this strategy is evident in the blockade imposed by Israel, controlling the flow of goods and people, essentially cornering Hamas, geographically and politically. This blockade had significant humanitarian consequences for the residents of Gaza. The Israeli government justified the blockade as a necessary measure to prevent the influx of weapons and to curb terrorist activities originating from Gaza. Every aggressive move by Hamas justified harsher Israeli responses and tighter controls, feeding into the security narrative central to Netanyahu's political agenda. In this way, Netanyahu used Hamas's presence to strengthen his position as a protector of Israeli security. But this strategy had its consequences. The international community often criticized the blockade and the humanitarian impact on Gaza's civilians. The strategy also fueled a cycle of violence. Each Israeli clampdown led to more aggression from Hamas, which in turn led to further Israeli retaliation. In this way, the Netanyahu-Hamas relationship became codependent. The symbiosis between Netanyahu and Hamas Netanyahu's approach had significant implications for the region's geopolitics. By maintaining Hamas as a de facto governing body in Gaza, Israel could focus its diplomatic and military efforts on other fronts, particularly Iran. This strategy also influenced Israel's relationships with other regional players, as countries like Egypt and Qatar became involved in mediating talks between Israel and Hamas. This paradoxical strategy saw Hamas becoming a tool in Netanyahu's larger geopolitical game. From 2012 to 2018, the Israeli government, under Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu, approved the transfer of over $1.1 billion from Qatar to Gaza, supposedly for humanitarian purposes. However, this move was seen as a way to maintain a divide between Hamas in Gaza and the Palestinian Authority in the West Bank. 
By keeping these two Palestinian factions separate, Netanyahu's government could argue that there was no unified Palestinian leadership to negotiate with, thus stalling any significant progress toward a two-state solution. The idea was to reduce the political pressure Israel faced to create a Palestinian state. This strategic move, however, was not without controversy. Netanyahu's approach was critiqued as a method to buy quiet without addressing the root issues of Palestinian discontent. In 2020, Netanyahu's defense minister, Avigdor Lieberman, disclosed that Netanyahu had urged Qatar to continue these payments. Lieberman, highlighting the paradox, stated, Suddenly, Netanyahu appears as the defender of Hamas. He resigned in protest, calling this the first instance of Israel funding terrorism against itself. The escalation of conflict in 2023 raised critical questions about the sustainability of Netanyahu's strategy, which might have sown the seeds for deeper conflicts. Shift in Dynamics The dynamics between Benjamin Netanyahu and Hamas shifted dramatically with the events leading up to and following the October 7, 2023 attack. This date marked a crossroads in the Israeli-Palestinian conflict, bringing to light the limitations and risks of Netanyahu's long-term strategy towards Hamas. On this day, a coordinated attack by Hamas resulted in the deadliest day for Israelis, with a significant number of casualties. This event left Israel in shock, exposing the fragile nature of the Netanyahu-Hamas relationship. The Israeli military response to this attack was swift and severe. Under Netanyahu's leadership, the military launched extensive operations in Gaza, aiming to dismantle Hamas's capabilities. These actions were met with international scrutiny and raised humanitarian concerns due to the high number of civilian casualties and widespread destruction in Gaza. Amidst this, Netanyahu faced unprecedented public outrage. His failure to prevent the attack and the disorganized government response led to a substantial decline in public support, with polls showing a majority of Israelis calling for his resignation. Netanyahu's pledge to continue the fight against Hamas after a temporary pause in hostilities further demonstrated the complexities of this conflict. The situation revealed the deep-seated issues with Netanyahu's approach, where short-term security measures clashed with the long-term need for a stable and peaceful resolution. Netanyahu's security strategy and the failure of divide and rule. Benjamin Netanyahu's tenure as Prime Minister of Israel has been marked by a distinctive security strategy shaped by his perception of the threats facing Israel. Central to this strategy is the belief that the security of Israel hinges on a robust approach to dealing with perceived threats, particularly from the Palestinian territories. This approach has often been characterized by a combination of military might, diplomatic maneuvers, and a tough stance on peace negotiations. At the heart of Netanyahu's security policy is the control of territories deemed crucial for Israel's safety. Under Netanyahu's leadership, the number of Israeli settlements increased, deeply embedding Israeli presence in the West Bank. He argued that these settlements were necessary to ensure the security of Israeli citizens, a claim that resonated with many in Israel. Moreover, Netanyahu's security approach included targeted military operations in response to perceived threats. These operations ranged from airstrikes against militant targets in Gaza to covert operations abroad. The goal was to maintain a posture of strength, deterring potential aggressors and demonstrating Israel's readiness to defend itself. However, critics of Netanyahu's strategy argue that it has perpetuated a cycle of violence and hardened attitudes on both sides of the conflict. While it has garnered support within Israel, it has also been a subject of controversy and criticism, both domestically and internationally, for its impact on the prospects of peace and the lives of Palestinians. Benjamin Netanyahu's strategy towards Hamas 
marked by a mix of confrontation and indirect support, ultimately showcased the failure of a divide-and-rule approach. This strategy intended to weaken the overall Palestinian position by maintaining Hamas's control in Gaza, backfired, contributing to a more fragmented and volatile situation. The events of October 7, 2023 were a reminder of this failure. The devastating attack challenged the notion that Netanyahu's approach was ensuring Israel's security. Netanyahu's strategy impacted the Israeli domestic political landscape. His reliance on security-focused policies and the portrayal of Hamas as an existential threat helped maintain his political position. However, this approach also polarized Israeli society and politics, contributing to an environment where alternative peace-oriented solutions were sidelined. As we reflect on how Netanyahu's tactics intertwine with Hamas's rise to power, critical questions arise. What future lies ahead for Israeli and Palestinian relations? How will the actions of leaders and groups like Netanyahu and Hamas shape the prospects for peace?